sit here and you're skeptical every day, and then you go to church and you get on your knees and you pray to an Correct. invisible man in the sky. Invisible and you man don't in the think sky. That's a scam. No, I don't. You, uh, you know, and I'll tell you why. A man that was you know, built by a man. I'll tell you why it's not a scam, in my opinion. Uh -huh. All right, tide goes in, tide goes out. Never a miscommunication. You can't explain that. You can explain why the tide goes tide in. Tide goes in. Yeah. Tide goes out. See the out. water, the tide. Because you're looking at this from a very narrow, egotistical vantage point. It's not about no, no, no. ego. It's about science. You Sean. can't believe there's something greater than you. No, that's not it at all. The fact is that in absence of knowledge, if we don't know something, that's not evidence for an invisible magic man in the sky. Is that I've been wearing my atheist shirts everywhere all the time, uh, especially when I travel. Uh, I just came back from Oklahoma and uh, went through Houston. I have not gotten a negative reaction to any of my clothing in a couple of years now. And that includes travel all through the Bible Belt. What I do get is compliments all the time, on a regular basis. But anyways, oh, let's harass her right now. I want to harass her right now, okay? <laughs> penis, penis. I'm so offended. You know, I, a David, you didn't ask you my consent. Now. Penis. But you know what? You have my consent for everything. No, but I'm saying it's to her, and I didn't give her my consent. Oh. So she watches this video. Now I've assaulted her. Oh, now, now she's gonna, now she's gonna send you a cease and desist. And yeah. a David Silverman credits "Take Back the Night," a feminist women's rights rally held at the Brandeis University campus as the metaphorical match that ignited the fires of his activism. In 1996, David joined the American Atheists, and in 2010, he was elected president. He quickly rose to prominence. His main claims to fame were his many incendiary TV interviews on shows such as Hannity and The O'Reilly Factor, which spawned the What the Fuck meme face, as well as for spearheading the Atheist Billboard campaign, and for receiving the Richard Dawkins Award in 2017. To give you a bit better of an understanding of who David Silverman was and what he was known for within the atheist community, here's a portion of the speech Richard Dawkins gave before presenting him with the award. David Silverman is perhaps the most controversial of the 16 recipients so far of the Richard Dawkins Award. But that's something he and the Atheist Alliance should be proud of, and I am certainly proud to honour the original and most charismatic firebrand atheist. David Silverman is fearless. No, make that brave, for he knows the danger he puts himself in, and he sticks his head above the parapet anyway. Dave Silverman is an equal opportunity denouncer of all religion, and I wish there were more like him. Like other firebrand atheists, Dave doesn't provoke for the sake of it. He's quite simply honest and clear, consistent and straightforward. He makes enemies at both ends of the political spectrum, because the right don't like what he says, and the left don't like the clarity with which he says it. You probably know the Winston Churchill quote, You have enemies? Good. That means you've stood up for something. Dave Silverman stands up for all of us. The way he does so may not be everybody's way. It happens to be mine, and I suspect we can all agree that it's good he's out there doing it his way. David Silverman was known as the firebrand atheist, fearless in the face of religious hostility, and as Dawkins pointed out, willing to take shots from his supposed side, the evil SJW leftists. David Silverman's rise to fame comes in no small part thanks to the horrific events of 9-11, which irrevocably changed atheist discourse, especially in America. Once it had been seen as rude to criticize religion, but 9-11 had changed that forever, and it was becoming fashionable to do so. People like Dawkins and Silverman were raised up on the shoulders of that thirst to criticize the institutions that were seen as wholly or partially responsible for the attack on the Twin Towers. As fearless truth-tellers, they were willing to go on national television and criticize religion. And many prominent atheist voices, Silverman included, began to emerge, some of whom have admitted that 9-11 was the catalyst for their atheist activism. As the face of American atheists, it's hard to deny that Silverman was one of the most popular and influential atheist activists of this time period.
Dave built a very specific brand for himself as the president of American Atheists. He's a provocative and confrontational person who has seemingly no interest in extending charity to the people who disagree with him. You know those religious billboards that say stuff like, Marriage is one man plus one woman. One nation under me. God. Jesus saves and forgives. Pornography enslaves and destroys. The kind of stuff that makes you wonder what sort of obnoxious asshole would even think to write something like that? Well, Dave is the guy who said, what if we had atheist versions of those? And boy, he, uh, he certainly captured the tone. It definitely is satisfying seeing evangelicals get a taste of their own medicine, and as a marketing strategy, it's kind of brilliant. The people putting up those religious billboards certainly wouldn't sit idly by and let their precious children be assaulted with atheist propaganda. So they start raising a fuss and bringing more attention to it, and the next thing you know, Dave is on Fox News exposing millions of people to the American Atheist Foundation. But when you listen to Dave talk about the billboards and what his goal was, you might notice that something feels off. So what, what happened was is we come up with a, a, a good billboard, the one that went up in Albuquerque and the one that went up in Dallas, um, that talks about the nativity scene as fake news. It's a good, po poignant billboard that gets people to look at the nativity, call it fake news, and actually try and get them to question whether or not they should even go to church in the first place. Dave's whole argument is that there are hundreds of atheists out there who don't realize they're atheists because going to church has become such a routine part of their lives. So the billboards prompt them into thinking, hey yeah, why am I doing this? It's not entirely bad logic, my own journey to atheism was somewhat similar, but many people have pointed out that taking such a confrontational approach and showing up on Fox News to piss off a bunch of fundamentalist parents could make life worse for their non-believing kids. Dave likes to point out that he never directly insults religious people, just the religions themselves. But obviously, anyone who believes in religion as a way of life is going to take it personally when someone calls it a scam. To be clear, I'm not saying it's bad to be confrontational. One of my favorite bands is Bad Religion, a group that went out of its way to pick the most offensive name it could think of. As a non-believing kid in the Bible Belt, discovering them was a therapeutic experience for me. But when key members of the band like Greg Graffin or Brett Guritz are asked about their thoughts on religion, they don't take the same hardline stance Dave does. They actually have nuanced discussions about spirituality that spend more time promoting their own beliefs than dismissing those of others. Greg has even expressed regret that the crossbuster symbol is so offensive because it makes people less inclined to listen to the band's ideas. Dave, on the other hand, revels in being a controversial figure. He takes a hardline stance against religion and isn't above using manipulative and misleading tactics to attack it. He has proudly boasted that there are twice as many atheists in the US than religious people combined. When challenged on this claim, he argued that anyone who says they're not affiliated with the church is an atheist. He also labels all agnostics as atheists, even if they disagree with that categorization. Dave's approach to argument and belief during the height of his career is important because it helps us understand what happened next. <laughs> Fast forward to 2018 and Silverman's carefully constructed world began falling apart. In April of 2018, the American Atheists released a statement announcing that their board of directors placed David Silverman on paid leave after it had received a complaint. Quote, on the evening of Saturday, April 7, 2018, the American Atheist Board of Directors received a complaint regarding David Silverman, the president of American Atheists. The board takes very seriously the concerns expressed, and in accordance with organization policies, the board has placed Mr. Silverman on paid leave, while an independent investigation is conducted. Mr. Silverman has pledged his full cooperation with the investigation. End quote. Three days later, he was terminated. Quote, on April 9th, 2018, the board of directors placed President David Silverman on leave pending a review of allegations raised regarding Mr. Silverman's conduct. The board of directors has reviewed internal documents and communications related to the initial complaint, as well as evidence relating to the additional allegations brought to the board's attention. Today's announcement is based on these findings, and the board intends to cooperate with any future investigations." End quote. The next day, BuzzFeed put out a damning piece alleging multiple cases of sexual misconduct, which were corroborated by others within the atheist movement. Before moving forward, I just want to give a fair warning that we're about to talk about specifics of the case. And if you don't want to listen to the details, please fast forward the video to the timestamp indicated. In one of those complaints, a woman known as R said that she'd known David for years. She said that after flirting with her throughout the evening, Silverman invited her to smoke marijuana on the roof. 
But before they could leave, he forced himself on her. Quote, he physically pressed me to the wall and began to kiss me forcefully, grabbed my breasts, and put his hand into my leggings where there was actual penetration of my vagina. End quote. She alleges that he then pushed her to her knees and began insulting her. She says that his penis briefly made contact with her mouth, and when she told him no, he lightly slapped her on the face and said, quote, you don't get to say no to me, end quote. R decided to try a well-known BDSM safe word, which appeared to work. She was understandably shaken up by the incident, and she confided in at least two prominent atheists who later corroborated her story. She didn't immediately report Silverman's conduct to the American Atheist because she was, quote, worried that her reputation would be attacked, given Silverman's power within the movement, end quote. Another allegation was made by a student who said Silverman used his position of power to pressure her into having sex with him. She believed that if she angered him in any way, she wouldn't have a chance to be involved in the secular community. She alleges that she was drunk and wasn't able to consent. She said that Silverman did not have any condoms and pressured her into having anal sex. Afterwards, St. Clair said that Silverman told her she would have to leave early in the morning because his wife would be arriving at the hotel. She said he told her not to apply for an internship with American Atheists because appointing her could be seen as preferential treatment. I felt my interest in working for the organization was used as a way for him to have power so that I would have sex with him, St. Clair said. End quote. Another atheist activist, as well as a friend of the student, came forward and corroborated her story. As far as I know, David has never faced criminal charges, despite being credibly accused of sexual misconduct several times. David has said publicly that he had consent for those encounters. But even if you believe his version of events, there's really no argument against his abuse of power. David Silverman used his popularity and position of power in the atheist community to manipulate women into having sex with him. And he's admitted as much in a recent interview. I want to state this. Rose has a legitimate beef with me. I shouldn't have had sex with an attendee at a convention. Hmm. I was the president of an organization, and after she asked me for a job, and I knew that there was, and I, I, I made it okay in my brain because I said no, but I really should have not. There, there, was, a, there was a power differential there. There was a, dy a power dynamic issue there. I get it. Um, she said that she was afraid that I would do something to her if I didn't. And a little bit later, he admits it again, although he tries to lessen his responsibility in the clip you're about to see. Okay, the power dynamic issue is real. And that's why, I sh that's why when, when she comes back and says, I felt I couldn't say no. I mean, yes, I can get mad and say, I didn't tell you that. I didn't suggest that. I made no. But mm. the point is that the power dynamic issue was real. She was young. I was in power. She wanted a job and I knew it. It was wrong. So the part, so this, there's two allegations. For the first one, you're saying part of it is right. The part of it is not. The part that is not right is that she didn't look Drunk. She wasn't drunk. Correct. But the part that you acknowledged that it was wrong and that you made a mistake was taking advantage of the power dynamic. Yeah, I, I, I guess taking advantage of the power dynamic is a fair assessment. Um, I was, you know, it was 2012. We didn't understand power dynamics back then. I certainly didn't. Um, and, you know, yeah, that's exactly, you know, the, a woman was throwing herself at me. She was young. She was beautiful. I was middle-aged. I said yes when I should have said no. Now, I was around in 2012, and power dynamics were well known then, and they're well known now. We're not talking ancient history here. But although David apologizes in the same interview for his misconduct, he doesn't miss a chance to play victim by insinuating that she's at least partially at fault because she supposedly wasn't drunk. And she ruined him by bringing her story into the spotlight. So is that something you want to apologize to her for? I have and I will apologize to her right here. I'm sorry for the power dynamic issues. I'm sorry for having sex with you. However, I'm not going to lie to ruin you because of it, right? Mm. Okay, so I get that she regrets her decisions and I get that there was a power dynamic issue, mm. but she wrecked my life by falsely claiming she was drunk and she wasn't. We had a long walk. Mm. We had a long conversation. She wasn't. Um, I don't want to get into a um, an accusational thing because I mean there's a lot of emotions in my brain. Okay? Right, right, right. It's been a tremendous year. Yeah. Um, and my brain is um, uh, uh, damaged, broken. Not broken, but damaged. Because of these accusations. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh my God. Um, 
so yeah I am uh, hopeful that Rose will remember that we had the conversation about the job outside while we were walking to the hotel so it was before anything sexual happened and in that conversation you were not inebriated um, and I hope that she will think about it and, re and realize that and yes I apologize for having sex with you I apologize for observing for, for ignoring the power dynamic issue I apologize for um, I, I guess you would say taking advantage of the power dynamics that's that's the phrase okay he takes the time to reiterate how bad his life is how much damage he's had to contend with but doesn't seem to fully grasp how much damage he's caused them it's like he believes a quick sorry with a long buh in the middle is enough to lift him from the hole he's dug himself. He acts as if they owe him something. And as you'll soon see, this is a pattern that is repeated again and again. However, an American atheist spokesperson said it wasn't the allegations of sexual assault that led to his termination. Quote, Nick Fish, a spokesman for the American Atheists, said the sexual allegations were not the reason that Silverman was terminated. The board was able to review a lot of documents that allowed them to conclude Silverman violated its internal policy, including staff management, conflicts of interest, and violations of its general code of conduct, Fish said. He lost the confidence of the board, and his contract allowed the board to terminate him for any reason. And loss of confidence is more than enough. End quote. Some have speculated that Silverman misused American Atheist funds to promote his book, Fighting God, but no criminal charges were brought forward. After getting fired from American Atheists and before this... Everybody lied. The allegations They're all true. lies. It's a big complex lie. Dave went quiet for several months. He finally reemerged in August of 2018 with an open letter to American Atheists. During my time at American Atheists, I have done many things of which I am very proud, but I've also made some bad choices that stemmed from my position of power. As the president of an organization that tends to attract people who have more liberal views on sexuality, I was in a position to receive more attention from women than in my previous life at Bell Labs. Over time, I let this get to my head to an extent which I assume is similar to how rock stars feel. Consent, in every relationship, has always been essential for me personally. I live by the principle that every encounter with the partner must be safe, sane, and consensual. I now realize that even when someone gives unpressured, enthusiastic consent, other factors must be taken into consideration. The letter is fairly long, but you can find a link to the entire thing in the description. Essentially, Dave vehemently denies that he did any wrongdoing according to the rules and regulations of American atheists. He also mentions that he started therapy around the time one of the events occurred. Since then, I've changed substantially. Many of my friends have noticed. And I'm proud that I see sexuality, love, power, integrity, and personal responsibility in a new, more enlightened light. It is not okay for us to have a society where people can't go to supposed victims and say, hey, you're actually not a victim. You're fine. Calm down. Take a pill. Uh, this We're is where fine. I'm like, I... Not long after this came out, Dave returned to the public eye with the launch of his new YouTube channel. Contrary to the semi-apologetic tone he had in his letter, Dave is more dismissive of American atheists here, claiming that he is now liberated from their stifling politics. In an interview, he says that his efforts to defend them were like some type of Stockholm Syndrome. Uh, my, my good friend Andrew once said to me that it was like, um, that I was like a, uh, a raped choir boy who still defended the church. <laughs> Wait, what was that? That I was like a uh, a raped choir boy, a raped choir boy, a raped choir boy. <sighs> I've got some advice for you, Dave. You're actually not a victim. You're fine. Calm down. Take a pill. Uh, this We're is where fine. I'm like I. Not long after that, he had an extensive interview with Sargon of Akkad, a man well known for being a friend and ally to women. Now, women are also involved in politics, and frankly, society is declining. Thus began Dave's new love affair with the alt-right community. These were safe spaces for David because they never questioned his behavior and were more than ready to validate his burgeoning belief that women have too much power. It wasn't long before Dave, a man who often declared himself a feminist, had an epiphany. Maybe sexism has been... solved. So... 
I'm looking at the feminism movement as having won. I think we're won. And it's kind of new to me to think about this thing like this because, I mean, the second wave feminists, we were looking for equal work for equal pay, which essentially we got. And the elimination of the glass ceiling, which I think we got. The elimination of systemic prejudice against women, which I think we got. So as I'm looking at the new feminist movement, the current feminist movement, which with, with which I am no longer associated, I, uh, I look at a bunch of activists without a cause. Dave is a prime example of why it's a bad idea for men to identify as feminists. It's easy to support things like equal pay and fair opportunities, but at the end of the day, it's not men's bodily autonomy that is subjugated to national debate every year. It's not men's lives that are seen as expendable during pregnancy. It's not men who have to accept 2% less pay as good enough. It's not your fight, Dave. Supporting it is important, but you certainly do not get to decide when it's finished. Anyway, you may have noticed that Dave is sporting some new attire in that clip. That's right, believe it or not, Dave did manage to get a new job after everything that happened. Meet the new executive director of Atheist Alliance International. I am sure that Dave will take the lessons he learned about professional conduct and power dynamics to heart and spend many long years building a strong relationship with perhaps the only atheist organization that's still willing to work with him. According to the friendly atheist at the time, the move to hire Silverman was made because he was well known within atheist circles, and they thought he could boost their visibility. Gail Miller, their president of AAA at the time, wrote this blurb on their website welcoming David Silverman to the organization. Quote, David is a well-known public atheist, a powerful leader, and a compelling public speaker. He has proven management and organizational skills, including leadership of national and local organizations in the U.S., He's a personality who makes things happen. He will grow public awareness of AAI and our campaigns. He will help the board develop strategy, and he will help manage campaigns to ensure they deliver for atheists everywhere. I'm thrilled to have him on the team." End quote. Roughly a month later, another allegation was made against Silverman. This time a woman came forward and accused him of unwanted touching during a party. She said she had bent over to pick up her shoes, and David had caressed her lower back. Not long after, Silverman resigned from AAI. Once again, he made himself out to be the victim. In one exchange, he talks about how this could lead to permanent damage to his reputation. Shortly after that, in the same conversation, Silverman downplays his part in what happened, admits that the alleged victim filed for a restraining order against him after he continued to call her names, and then says he was the real victim throughout all of this. Oh yeah, the atheist organization that hired Silverman, despite knowing about the numerous allegations against him, they more precisely, their executive director, recently thought it was a good idea to use the R word in a tweet. And that's not at all strange, considering their stated goals are integrity, always doing the ethical thing, and inclusion. Oh, and never making excuses. When KC politely asked them to reconsider using a word that further stigmatizes those with disabilities, they decided to call KC a cunt. And by the way, if you're thinking to yourself that the R word isn't all that bad, you should rethink that stance. I work with people who are disadvantaged, and when you see the hurt in their eyes when that word is used around them, even if it's not being directed towards them, you'd probably, hopefully, decide that you can make the same point without belittling, degrading, and harming disadvantaged people. If you run a charitable organization that is supposed to help everyone, including disabled people, you'd think you'd be well aware of this. Anyone who has ever received any sensitivity training in a charitable organization would know this. But it wasn't long before David jumped in on the conversation. He didn't really add much, besides a bunch of childish language, while trying to spin it as the division was being caused by KC, and not the organization throwing around ableist slurs, doubling down on those slurs, throwing sexist slurs at someone politely criticizing them, and acting in an all-around unprofessional manner. I can see why they thought David would be a good fit in their organization. They seem to display the same sort of victim complex and inability to come to terms with how their actions, language, and demeanor can have negative consequences in the real world, as David Silverman.
during all this controversy, Dave still managed to find time to sue American atheists. He even started a GoFundMe for it, which, despite the fact that he has already dropped the suit, is still receiving donations. Classy move there, Dave. David's lawsuit alleged that American atheists fired him with no due process, and that a board member, Matt Dillahunty, conspired with his accusers to defame and blackmail him. Not only did Dave file this suit a year after the statute of limitations had passed, but none of his claims really hold water. According to his contract, he could be fired at any time pending a vote from the board of directors, which did happen with a unanimous vote to remove him. The lawsuit was a bad idea. Like, really bad. So bad that former attorney Nate the Lawyer called it Probably the worst lawsuit. You know, not even probably. It was the worst lawsuit I've ever seen. It was total bull. In spite of everything, Dave managed to find work as an independent contractor for the Conroe Foundation. His job will be to support nonprofit organizations that champion free speech, civil discourse, or environmental slash climate change issues. This nonprofit org was founded by Andrew Conroe, the creator of several hookup websites, including Adult Friend Finder. So something tells me Dave will fit in quite well there, but they are waiting for the results of an investigation into his conduct before bringing him in full time. Aside from that, Dave has spent most of his time digging into the rhetoric of the intellectual dark web. The man who once took pride in taking up arms against Bill O'Reilly and Sean Hannity is now saying that we need to stop making enemies and that everyone is really on the same side. He'll advocate for sites like Slug.com, a forum where one can finally engage in controversial topics without fears of SJW policing and enjoy the rich rigors of unbiased debate. You need only take one glance at the homepage to know that this is the place to go for true intellectual discussion. After looking into Dave's case, I'll admit that the details in the BuzzFeed article probably don't tell us the whole story, which is likely why he's so often ready to regale us with every minute detail of his version of events. But what Dave doesn't seem to get is that it doesn't really matter how it happened. Three women have come forward accusing him of crossing a line, and whether the events occurred exactly how they were reported in BuzzFeed is irrelevant. It's blatantly clear that the way Dave treats women is inappropriate. What really damns Dave, in my opinion, is his eagerness to jump into bed with the people who gleefully attack the feminist movement he long claimed to be an ally of. He abandoned the fight for social justice the minute he was challenged to reflect on his actions, and it makes me doubt that he ever had any real convictions to begin with. It's been a long road for both of us. Both Rutko and I have watched, read, and listened to more Silverman than we likely ever wanted to. I don't think either of us rejoice in the gradual public destruction of someone who once was an important figure to the online atheist movement. However, it seems clear that he should never again be put in a leadership position. The cracks were obvious for a long time, from his need for public attention, his unwillingness to admit fault, and his abuses of power. David Silverman should have been rooted out of the atheist movement long before he actually was. We both kind of view him as a political chameleon. He seems to be whatever will bring him eyeballs. When 9-11 brought with it a strong sentiment against religion, he was there to capitalize on it. When he made his return, he realized that the rot ran deep in the online atheist community, favoring right-wing, anti-feminist, centrist, and reactionary content, which suited him just fine. He was able to point his finger at his victims and accusers and pretend they were at fault, that it was them who had ruined him with their social justice insanity. But it was never about anyone else. It was always about David Silverman. We both hope he turns the ship around, but we find it unlikely he will do so. However, his tale should be a warning to all of us as well. We need to be more careful. We need to demand more from the public figures we raise up with our views and money. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider checking out Redgo's content. He makes some excellent videos. Cheers.